Welcome to another of our series in Scholarly Habits for Greek Exegesis. We are examining Habit 2, How to Debate Greek Words in the Bible. We're looking at that in the way that scholars have examined as they do Greek word studies. And we're going through the techniques of word studies. We first went through how one writes a word study, a four to five page paper that discusses how words are used in the New Testament by looking at the uh, Greek lexicons, how the Greek word was actually used in Greek, common Greek usage in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. We are now in a second part, which is looking at theological dictionaries. Theological dictionaries start with the information found in lexicons and go a little deeper. They provide in additional information on the definitions. They look at culture, they look at history, and they look at the, how the, te the word was used in the New Testament. Today we're looking at Verbrugge's uh, New International uh, Dictionary of New Testament Theology. We're looking today at epitomao for the, for the word used in Luke 17.2, which is part of the pericope in Luke 17.1-4. Now, here is a, a, a general description of what Verbug says for epitomao. It's pretty compressed, but perhaps you can Print. Notice at the top it has epitomao, it has various words, epitomao, the transliteration, rebuke, meaning rebuke, it has epitomia, and censor. And then it has, uh, at the next point, the common language, the CL, and the Old Testament usage, then the New Testament usage, AB, and then the noun epitomia. So let's look at that. In the Old Testament, you notice that it means to honor, sensitize, penalize, erase, and praise. This picks up almost directly from Thayer's work. It can also mean penalty, vanity, honor, and respect. Then it goes to the Septuagint. In the Septuagint, people were book. Notice we're using Genesis 37.10, but should not do so, references Rook, unless they have judicial, paternal, or fraternal authority. Look at Ecclesiastic 7.10. Three or Proverbs. Those are new things that we didn't see in the lexicons. God does have the right to rebuke, but only not only humans, but created order and Satan. Notice we we mentioned Psalm 9, 5 and 76. Uh, that's not something we've seen, but we did see the created order and the Zechias. New Testament, the verb is found in all three synoptic gospels and applied in disapproval but not an exaction of the country polity. This sense of rebuke will suit all circumstances, but more precise. The people rebuke one another. Notice we discovered that in the lexicon. Uh, notice we have the disciples uh, rebuking the parents who brought their children, the crowd rebuffing the blind men, Peter rebuking Jesus, and the Pharisees asking Jesus to rebuke his disciples. Um, in each instance, he disapproves of the rebuke, but he's free to deliver Luke. Again, he's taking the prerogative of God. Sometimes uh, Jesus rebukes in order to repress us. He casts out demons, fevers, storms. There's a Jesus taking on the incident of God with rebuking nature and Satan. In Mark uh, 7, Jesus rebukes in order forbidding what might happen if the disciples uh, started publicizing it. So you really have the same sort of thing, Jesus having a rebuke. Now, let's look a little further into the rebuke. You see that there was the epitmao. You saw the same type of uh, shorter word, a noun in words. You see that he's giving the Old Testament scriptures, as I've just discussed, and he's echoing the bidag. He's using the key passages we saw in uh, the BDAG and in Thayer. He's also giving a bit more of the discussion as he looks at the passages. Uh, notice we see a unique piece here in 106, Psalm 106, and he has Zechariah. 
Now, again, you, he's really looking at Mark's use of the rebuke. Uh, that's one way to uh, restrict your thing is to look at just one part. He looks at Jesus rebuking them, uh, Jesus rebuking nature, and he doesn't have the Luke passage, so it doesn't really show the same thing. He does rebuke in Luke and be careful. It says, be on your guard if your brother sins and repents for forgive them. There is where we find the men, Jesus rebuking and men rebuking. Now, human to human New Testament indications, it shows the Second Timothy thing we've discussed and God rebuking Satan as having power. So the noun usage only occurs in Second Corinthians 2 where it refers to punishment being meted out by the congregation's discipline. So how would you summarize? You would give the same thing. Greek means to honor, censor, penalize, or raise price. The Septuagint, rebuke only if you have judicial, paternal, or fraternal authority. That's much more uh, clear language than maybe we used in our own summarization, but the same thing. And it provides the same three definitions. Men or Jesus disapprove of action. Jesus represses semen, demons or sickness. And God, Jesus restricts announcements of his action, and in Timothy, a Christian approval. So it is really equivalent. Now, next we're going to look at, we've seen two fine theological dictionary entries, uh, TDNT and uh, Verbrugge. Next we're going to look at the IFBSC, which is a second tier uh, theological dictionary. I look forward to discussing with you further this interesting topic on what epitema or rebuke means in the New Testament by using Greek word study.